Hi Sioux Falls, welcome to Planning Preview for the month of October 2021. I'm joined today by Jason Bieber, Senior Planner at the City of Sioux Falls. Hi Jason, how are you today? Doing great, thanks for having me. Good Jason, it's hard to believe we just got three months left uh, or so in the calendar. Uh, what are things looking like for the remainder of the year at uh, City Hall? Well, we're still crushing our building permit record and as you can see by our agenda today, 15 items in October is quite a few that we've, you know, more than we normally have at this time of year so is it? things okay. are still moving along pretty good yeah 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 the uh, planning commission's certainly been busy and mm -hmm. i would imagine probably expected to stay that way for november and december or? yeah like everybody's like oh we can't wait till we get to those those months that you're talking about because things will slow down and i don't think it'll slow down yeah. this year <laughs> yeah kind of a sign of the times in yeah. sioux falls right now that's so. right all right, well, we've got a, a, a good agenda, like you mentioned, uh, very full, so let's get right into sure. it and talk about our applications uh, for the month of October. Uh, first up is a preliminary subdivision plan. That's at uh, 41st Ellis Edition, located south of 41st Street and west of South Ellis Road. Uh, 41 Ellis LLC is that property owner and they've got a rezone with it as yep. well. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what they're doing out there? Yep, so we've got that preliminary subdivision plan that kind of talks about preliminary lot and block layout for what they're building and then as you indicated later down on the agenda there's a rezoning to go to some townhomes and apartments out there. If you guys haven't been out to 41st and Ellis, it's just kind of going crazy in that northeast corner. You're getting fairway. You're, I believe Starbucks is going out there. You've got a couple other strip malls. Um, northwest corner is where Lloyd's building their their large apartment complexes. Along, I think the, there's a new indoor storage area yep, that's going yep. out there. I'm not sure if they broke ground. And then this is kind of that southwest corner. Um, the immediate southwest corner is still actually outside of city limits, but the west half of this property uh, was purchased in annexed in and just some okay. more of the kind of the same out there in Westwood Valley, you know, apartments townhomes, um, single family uses going out there. So Sure, awesome to see what an unbelievable amount of development yeah. on a major 41st and Ellis intersection mm -hmm. there. So uh, next on the list is a rezone from the AG Agricultural District to the C3 Community Commercial District. That's located at uh, 4615 West 69th Street, uh, so kind of by the Heart Hospital on 69th Street. Yep, exactly, just south of the Heart Hospital. It's one of those small properties that was uh, kind of a farmstead for a long time, and then once uh, those people uh, moved out, it was purchased and then annexed into the city, and when it comes into the city, it comes in as agricultural, because that's what it was in the county. So now they're just kind of cleaning it up to C3, and then eventually join it with the larger uh, portion of commercial that they have out there so okay makes sense uh, next on our list is a rezone uh, we're going from the RS single-family residential suburban district to the RD1 twin home duplex residential suburban district that's at 2010 and 2012 West 22nd Street so kind of in between Sanford and the VA hospital yeah. yep and as you can tell this is kind of one of those shape places things um, as we looked back uh, through our permit since 2014, we did find where it was converted to a duplex, has okay. two addresses that you just read um, legally. So what we do then, as we talked about before, we have the app, uh, the owner submit an application to rezone it to the correct zoning district. We don't charge that fee and just really kind of try and clean it up, so. Okay, very good. Uh, next on our list is a rezone from the I-1 Light Industrial District to the MH Manufactured Residential Housing District. That's located at 3301 East Rice Street. So kind of Rice Street and 229? Yep, uh, east of there a little way. So this okay. is an existing mobile home park and there was a par parcel that they've actually been using for kind of open space for their mobile home for number of years and and now they've actually just purchased it from the person that was leasing it to them and so they're just coming in and cleaning it up and and get it to be the same as the mobile home park so nothing's really changing just trying to clean it up a little bit so sure understood uh, next on our agenda is a rezone from the rs single family residential suburban district to the rt1 single family residential traditional district that's located at 725 east 28th street so kind of close to woodlawn cemetery yeah so this act parcel actually butts up to woodlawn cemetery uh really a, a real uh, uh not very wide parcel i think it's even less than 40 foot wide oh, okay. uh, this gentleman actually had a fire at his house and burned down the house so now he's looking at constructing a new 
new house on there. Really can't make it fit with the current RS zoning district. It's less than that 50 foot wide, so we're working with them to rezone that to RT1 to be able to give them those options to be able to build a house back on it. So. Sure, seems like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, go to the next one, which is a rezone from the RA1 residential apartments low density, low density district to the RT2 townhome residential traditional district. That project is at 800 South Sycamore Avenue, so on the east side, it looks like. Yep, so this is, I don't know, people know the Field of Dreams that was done by Affordable Housing Solutions. So the south half of this lot, um, they developed and kind of went with the condo type route on the south portion. Um, this north portion, what they what they found out is they want to do more townhome type units. So to be able to get frontage and all those streets to sell the townhome style unit uh, becomes a little bit more easier for banks to obviously lend uh, to people when you're doing that instead of condos. And you know that sure. with some of you, the work that you do on your uh, private job. So. Yep, yep, without a doubt. All right, next on the list, Jason, is a rezone from the RA1 Residential Apartments Low Density District to the RT1 Single Family Residential Traditional District. That's at 304 North Spring Avenue, so kind of a sixth in Minnesota area. Yep. Yep, this is a current vacant lot, and as you know, in the RA1, they can do single family there, yep. but they'd have to do that suburban um, form, and this lot is rather small, like we've talked about before, so they're rezoning that to RT1 because it's a lot less than 50 feet, and then they want to invest in it and build a new single family house on it. So. Okay, very good. Uh, next on our list is a rezone from the O Office District to the RT1 Single Family Residential Traditional District. That's at 530 North Cliff Avenue, so up on the north side of town. Yep, so this is on uh, Cliff and I think 3rd Street. Um, it's an existing house that uh, Seacog just just uh, got back from the bank on that aspect of it. So they're looking to go in there, really do a lot of improvements on the inside. It needs some love. And then there's currently not a garage on it, so what they'd like to do is, is do an attached garage on that specific parcel also. So. Okay, very good. Uh, next on our agenda is a rezone from the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District to the CN Conservation District located at 1355 East Sugar Maple Drive. So just east of Willow Run. Yep. Tell us about this one. Yep, so this is a large parcel that's kind of back um, to the southwest of some houses up there in Arbor's Edge. One of the property owners owns that aspect uh, or this large lot. Would like to uh, zone it as conservation because it's really not usable with the specific flood area. And then kind of utilize it as some additional yard for his uh, single family house. So. Okay, sure. Uh, next on the agenda is a rezone from the Egg Agricultural District to the RR Single Family Residential Rural District. That's located at uh, 9009 East 57th Street. So very far southeast part of town, kind of mm -hmm. east of Six Mile Road even. Yep, huh? yep, you're east of Six Mile Road, and if you guys haven't been out there, um, 57th Street is being kind of graded, or some utilities are gonna start going in, then next year we're gonna pave that all the way out. Awesome. And so this would be um, just east of Six Mile, exactly what you said, and then it's a parcel that's on a pretty large parcel, and the applicant's looking to split that into two lots and then um, develop two single family homes on it. So. Okay, we haven't seen a ton of applications for that area yet, but there's such large swatches of land down there, I would imagine we've got a lot coming forward in the future. Yeah, and that's something we talk about. We've talked to some developers out there north of 57th Street, and I believe most of that ground is, is either has been sold to developers and they're gonna start coming in in the next couple months to, to start re zoning it and it's what we talk about trying to keep up with growth we're barely going to get you know you think you're right now you go out there it's a gravel road hey we're paving yeah. 50 century we're going to get ahead of it well by the time 50 century is paved they'll probably be already built up yep. 57 yep. street so it's hard to keep up in this yeah. town right now and and especially once you start moving that dirt work it gets everybody want to move yeah. even faster yeah. too so yeah. uh, i would imagine there's a lot uh, in store for that area in the future so uh, last on our agenda is a rezone from the I-1 Light Industrial RD2 Townhome Residential Suburban and RS Single Family Residential Suburban Districts to the CN Conservation District. That's located at 707, 709, and 711 South Blavelt Avenue. Uh, kind of a cliff in, uh, kind of by this big Sioux in Sioux Falls. Tell yeah, us about yep, that. Just kind of north of the railroad tracks, so it's really some vacant lots that are really unusable, to be honest with you, because they're in the flood area. 
I know we had Lightscape looking at it and couldn't make it work because of elevation changes and things. So the, the applicants here, what they want to do is do kind of a community garden and actually use it as kind of a teaching tool for people to oh, learn fun. how to garden and stuff. So to be honest with you, it's kind of a unique little project and could be kind of a, a, a cool way to utilize those properties that you really can't build structures on. So. Yeah, that is. That's uh, great to see the creativity mm -hmm. there, without a doubt. Well, thanks, Jason. Appreciate yeah. it. As you mentioned, we had a full agenda for October, so we look forward to that meeting on October 6th. Yep, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Uh, and Sioux Falls, be sure to stick around for the second half of our show. We've got Fletcher Laycock joining us. He's going to be talking about the Minnesota Avenue Corridor Study. Hi, my name is Brent and I'm a housing specialist with the City of Sioux Falls and I'm here with Kelly who is the property maintenance manager for code enforcement here in Sioux Falls. Kelly, we're looking at this, um, this window in the background here and this family has decided to put in an egress window and finish a bedroom down here. Do they really need this type of a window? Yes, absolutely. If you're going to have a habitable sleeping space in the basement, you need to have an egress window. It's got to be a five square foot opening. And that's for your safety in case of a fire or emergency you need to get out, you can get out. Or firemen or rescue personnel can get in to get you. I see they have a, a metal window well and then a cover on that. Is, should they have a cover that's fastened down on, a, on an egress window? No, the cover cannot be fastened down. You can have the cover, just not fastened down, something that's easily openable. And if it's more than four feet tall, it needs to have a ladder so somebody can climb out. Right. Could, if they didn't want metal, could they have a could they have a wood one or made out of rocks? Yep, you could have a, a wood or a block egress window. I mean, the 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 well is just to keep the dirt away and give you the air to get out of the window. Thank you, Kelly. Well, if you're planning on having habitable space down in your basement um, and to keep your family safe, be sure to install a new egress window. If you'd like to see if one of our city programs can help you out, call three six seven. 8180 or check us out online at SiouxFalls.org. Welcome back from the break Sioux Falls. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm joined today by Fletcher Laycock, uh, urban planner with the city of Sioux Falls. How are you today Fletcher? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Good. Uh, happy to have you on the program for the first time. Uh, I know you've been around uh, the city government here for three months or so. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about where you came from? Yeah, uh, Fletcher Laycock, uh, urban planner, city of Sioux Falls, uh, planning and development services. Uh, been here for three months and working on regional and long-range uh, planning issues for the city. Okay, very fun. We've been uh, fortunate to have you the last few months and it's been good to get to know you. Uh, we got you on today uh, talking about this thing called the Minnesota Avenue Corridor Study. Uh, I know it's been going on for a uh, number of years and a lot of people have a lot of questions about it, so this will be great. So uh, talk to us a little bit right off the bat. Tell us what is a corridor study? Yeah, so a corridor study is is a document where we're uh, looking at information background on uh, an area to identify issues and opportunities so that we can make recommendations. Um, in this case, when we're talking about a corridor, we're talking about Minnesota Avenue, and uh, it's a, a street network or a street which provides connection to the north edge of the city south to the edge of the city and beyond and provides access to a lot of uh, housing, employee, employment centers, uh, retail, parks. And so uh, what we're looking at are the land use uh, opportunities in those areas. Okay, okay. So talk to me a little bit, Fletcher, about how uh, we got to where we're at with the, with the corridor study. How did we get this started? When did we get it started? And, 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 and why does uh, the planning department do a corridor study? Yeah, so uh, a couple, before I started at the city, they'd already been in the process of doing a survey for the uh, north portion of the Minnesota Avenue corridor. And that's between Russell Street and Third Street. So uh, I believe this summer they started construction on the intersection of Russell Street and Minnesota Avenue. And then we'll see four phases of, of reconstruction on Minnesota Avenue going from the north end to the south. And we're gonna see four phases of this uh, land use study or corridor study 
uh, with that. Okay, gotcha. So why, uh, uh, tell me a little bit why the focus on Minnesota Avenue right now? Uh, is there a particular yeah, reason? Or? Great question. Uh, so the Public Works Department is, is currently working on a four-phased reconstruction of Minnesota Avenue. Okay. And their goals are to improve lighting, update infrastructure, uh, and improve the aesthetics of the corridor as well as helping with access. Um, so that is an opportunity for the city to look at what type of redevelopment may happen in that corridor. Okay, yeah, and, and what an opportunity. Uh, so much uh, transformation with Minnesota Avenue over the years with turning over businesses. Uh, but, you know, from a general road perspective, it's really kind of stayed very much so the same for so many numbers of years. And uh, I think uh, traffic departments over the years have learned a lot. And I imagine uh, with some of the improvements, it'll just improve traffic flow quite a bit. I think it will. Uh, when you look at Minnesota Avenue back in the 1920s when it started development, it was a, uh, a streetcar corridor, so there were a lot of trolleys. Uh, okay. That's gone away, but the, the style of development is you get the buildings pulled up closer to the street because as people were getting on and off those streetcars, they were able to hop into those stores uh, quickly. And so that's some of the remnants of development we see on Minnesota Avenue, and it really impacts what type of development we want to see in the future. Okay, gotcha. And I hear a lot uh, of individuals talking about the median. Is that a lot of what we're looking at? Is there going to end up being a median going down most of Minnesota Avenue then? Yeah, I think that's part of the plan. So there's a lot of free movement on Minnesota and to mm -hmm. lower the impact of, of or lower the incident of accidents and tra traffic collisions. They're putting in these medians to, to prevent left-hand turns, which uh, are the cause of many of these okay. incidents. Certainly. I, I, I think, uh, especially in that north part, uh, Fletcher, what a interesting corridor because we truly do have residential on Minnesota Avenue and a lot of people forget that if you don't travel it. Uh, but then you also have commercial. Uh, I mean, very, very close and it's like our main commercial corridor, that in 41st wow. uh, in town. So a very un unique process, I would imagine, going, uh, for you guys when you're analyzing something like this. So in the corridor report that we're doing, it's going to identify, th uh, have a map which identifies three different uh, development areas. The redevelopment okay. area along Minnesota Avenue, uh, where we're going to see if, if describing it colloquially, it'll just be bulldoze and what's going to come next. Then we have a transition area as we get off of Minnesota Avenue towards Spring and Dakota, where we want to invest in those areas. And then a maintenance area, which is we don't want to touch. It's a lot of uh, single family housing that uh, is a conservation area. And um, you know we want to protect people's investments and, and help them uh, continue to live in, in the neighborhoods they have. OK, yeah. And that's, uh, of, of course, a paramount concern, uh, all these individuals. And whether you're a business owner or a property owner, you've got property rights as well. And uh, the city needs to work. Uh, with those groups to make sure those relationships run smoothly and we can get a, a project that benefits everybody. And I think, Fletcher, this one's really unique to me because uh, so many travelers come from that airport and they go straight to downtown. And this is, you know, one of the first impressions of Sioux Falls. So really important that we get it right up on that north side of town to make sure it looks nice as well. And I think the Public Works Department's doing a great job with that and creating the aesthetics that are needed. Uh, what we hope to do with this report is provide uh, uh, something that Planning Commission and City Council can refer to when making land use decisions in the corridor. And what we've started with is the survey with the community, and then we're gonna move on this fall to a open house in conjunction with Public Works Department to uh, introduce this, and then we'll have it posted online once we have a draft of the report and uh, be able to take comments that way because it's very important to get the public's input on this. Yeah, and I would imagine uh, there's there's so many owners on Minnesota Avenue that are affected, and like you said, uh, just off of Minnesota Avenue as well. So um, uh, survey, you said, was the first step? Uh, survey, and then we're going to release the draft document and get comments back and uh, hold an open house in conjunction with the Public Works Department. Okay. And then uh, hopefully we'll be taking that to Planning Commission and City Council for 
uh, approval. Okay. Uh, and have you had much for comments, uh, much for public input so far on, on what people like, what people don't like uh, in corridor studies like this? We have had some input uh, at the beginning stages with the survey, but what we're hoping for is that once we have a, a draft document in place that we'll will get more people interested as it as they can see what, how it's going to impact them. Okay. Uh, so let's say I'm a property owner right off of Minnesota Avenue. What does it possibly mean? I mean, I know that there's a lot of uncertainty there, and that's what this process for is to gather public input. So uh, there's no certain answers yet. But is it possibly uh, a little bit uh, loss of a you know a, more of an encroaching right of way onto somebody's property? Uh, I know there's access issues. What could it possibly mean for adjacent property owners? What it might give them is an idea that the city is either going to is is probably going to support um, either the maintenance of their single-family home and help them invest in that as they live there. And we notice there's a lot of uh, home ownership occupancy in this homeowner occupancy in this area, uh, but it also will help for developers looking to purchase property along Minnesota Avenue and see what type of development would be allowed. Sure, sure. So opportunities for redevelopment there as well, which are good. Uh, let's talk about what's next, Fletcher, in this Minnesota Avenue corridor process. Uh, a lot of steps I know to get to the point where we're doing shovels into the ground, but uh, what, what comes next? Uh, next, we're, we're working on the draft document, and it's going to have a couple of scenarios that we want to get the public's input in as to what they would prefer to see in this section of uh, Minnesota Avenue between Russell Street and uh, 3rd Street. And once we have a scenario chosen, then we'll uh, do that draft document and have it available for the public to review. Okay, perfect. And I uh, just imagine this conversation today, uh, there's a lot of people that probably didn't know about this project uh, and that it was going on. Uh, where can uh, individuals who watch this get go to get more information? Is it the city's website or? It is the city website, SiouxFalls.org, and uh, planning and development services and uh, future land use planning. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Fletcher. Anything else you'd like to add about the project? Or? No, ju no, just thank you for having me and uh, looking forward to, to meeting with you a lot more often. Yeah, appreciate it. It was great to hear about it. So. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Sioux Falls. Uh, as always, we'd like uh, members of the public to come down to Carnegie Town Hall to give public input on agenda and non-agenda items. Our next Planning Commission meeting is October 6th at 6 p.m. at the Carnegie Town Hall. We'd love to see you there. Thank you.